Verbally Effective with Ina Esco is an interview style podcast that intersects art, culture, politics, and entertainment with a Memphis focus. Each week, I'm joined by a featured guest with roots in Memphis. Verbally Effective delves into each guest's personal journey to uncover the incredible stories fueling their purpose, the highs and lows of their pursuits, and how through their passion, they are moving the culture forward. It's Al Pickett, the founder of The Black Print, where I help people win in a brave new world through the financial markets, teaching them how to profit consistently through all the financial markets. And I'm here with Verbally Effective and Ina Esco. We all around Memphis, Tennessee right here. We in the mix as well with DJ BA, a.k.a. No Genre, a.k.a. Brandon Adams. And we on Verbally Effective Podcast with Miss Ina Esco. Let's go. Hey guys, it's your double E, Ina Esco, the host of the Verbally Effective Podcast. You know, this podcast intersects art, culture, politics, entertainment with a Memphis focus, all powered by We Are Memphis. I need you guys to hit subscribe on all streaming platforms and that YouTube Ina Esco channel as well. Well, thanks for joining me today, ladies and gents. I have one of my good friends here with me who is all about Memphis, all about the community, all about housing, all about development. I'm talking about the president and CEO of the Downtown Memphis Commission, Mr. Paul Young. What's up, Paul? What's up? What's up? Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here with you. Yes, I'm so glad you're here. You know, I ran into you uh, just the other week at Connect Memphis. They were having this big Yeah, uh, yeah, hip-hop architecture camp. It was an exciting opportunity to show kids the connection between hip-hop and architecture and just really trying to show kids how they can play a part in building up our own city and using music as a way to connect. I thought it was really creative, so we we worked with Material Bank to bring the hip-hop architect to Memphis, and they've been doing it in other cities across the country, so it was our turn. Wow, wow. Yeah, they got a lot of hot things going on over there at Connect. Um, I'm working with them on something right now, actually, that I'll share with the audience very soon. However, let's get into it, Paul Young. This is all about you today. All right. So what part of Memphis are you from? So I'm from Oak Haven. Uh, It's over near Winchester, Tullahoma area. Most people know it because of the hub. It's Mm. right by the hub. Uh, But I grew up there, went to Oak Haven Elementary, Snowden Junior High, East High School, uh, love Memphis through and through. Yeah, so like, you know, growing up in Oak Haven, you were hearing the planes all the time. Oh, you man, knew what time the every planes day. Go <laughs> every day, all day. <laughs> uh, my parents have a church over in Oak Haven okay. as well. So it, the church is actually still there. They still preach every Sunday. Wow. And uh, you still, called the you still there? Oh, uh, yeah, Sunday? I got to show up. I got to sh- show I've been doing a lot of virtual church, uh, okay. but my dad called and said, hey, it's time. You need to come okay. on back. Come on back in the building. So. Okay. I show up in church, at church as well. Okay, so what does your family dynamic look like? Do you have any brothers, sisters? Yeah, so I have younger brother. Uh, he works for Youth Villages. I got an older sister. She works for Shelby County. She's the director of community okay. services. Uh, I got an older brother that's in Nashville, and then another sister uh, who's who just moved back to Memphis from Kansas City. So wow. it's five of us. Are you guys pretty close? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're all close. We all we all talk. On a regular basis. Mm-hmm. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, what I want to know is what the young Paul Young was into <laughs> growing up in Oak Haven. What, what was I into? In? I used to try to play basketball. Try. Yeah, I was a I was a church league superstar. Okay, church <laughs> league. <laughs> uh, never really did anything on the on the basketball team, but mm-hmm. you know, my parents at the church, my dad would have this thing called Boys in the Hood, where. He would bring in young people from all throughout the neighborhood, Oak Haven community, and we'd play basketball every Saturday morning. Um, it was something, it was a staple for me growing up from the time that I was probably 12, 13, all the way till I was like 19, 20. That's what we did literally every Saturday. Oh, you were um, playing all the way. Oh, yeah, we was, we, we were serious with it. We were serious with it. So okay. played a lot of basketball, just like a lot of kids, loved Rap, hip hop. I grew up in the nineties, so okay, 90s. You know, I was a hip hop fan, uh, yeah. and you know, just had a good time. Okay. Just had a good time. What were those grades looking like back then? Oh, I was good. I was good in, on the grades. Uh, I, I don't remember my GPA, but I did mm-hmm. good enough to make it into uh, University of Tennessee, Knoxville, okay. where uh, I did electrical engineering there. Why did you choose electrical engineering? <laughs> it's so funny. So funny you ask. Because of Dwayne Wayne. <laughs> I know really? people are like what? 
did. Yeah, on Different World, yeah. Dwayne Wayne majored. He, he majored in engineering, and I just somewhere it just made up my mind in the seventh eighth grade, like that's what I want to do, mm-hmm. and um, I did it, and never worked in electrical engineering, but you know it gave me a great foundation. Okay. Learn how to think through problems in a logical way. So mm-hmm. it was a great program. So you were over there at UT? UT Knox, yep. Okay. Pledge Knox. Kappa Alpha Psi. Okay, what year? Brother of Kappa. Fall 2000. Okay, Fall, fall 2000. 2000. I'm a Shout out to Muro. Data Tar, a.k.a. Lamorne on. All right, cool. I'm on the board of Lamorne now. Okay, on the board. Right. We need to talk. We <laughs> All need right. to talk All about right. a few things. Yeah, I love LOC. I do, too. I do, too. It's a lot of uh, changes going on right now that yeah. I'm excited about. Yeah. Yes. Great leadership with the new president, so mm-hmm. we're excited about the path forward for the college. Amen, amen. Now, Paul, when you were graduating from UT Knoxville, what did you have your eyes set on to do? You know, honestly, I really did not know. So when I graduated, I moved back to Memphis, and um, I was working in retail. I just got a real estate license. I was just trying to figure it out because yeah. I couldn't find the engineering job I wanted. I was substitute teaching. So I was just trying to do anything to make ends meet. Mm-hmm. And I, I always tell this story so people get sick of me saying it, but it really was like the turning point in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, because one of my line brothers had called me, and he was like, man, why are you in Memphis? What are you doing? You need to be down. He was in Atlanta. I had another partner in New York, another one in L.A., and he was like, you need to be down here in Atlanta. You're losing right now. You shouldn't be in Memphis. And I was like, man, I just want to be here. This is where I want to be. And I was down, and so I went to church that Sunday. It was a Sunday or two after that, and my mom was preaching about the purpose-driven life, and Mm. she said, in her sermon, she said, God's purpose for your life will never be for you. It will always be for somebody else. And so from that point forward, I said, all right, what job can I do where I can do something for somebody else, but I could still earn a good living? And I decided I just got this real estate degree. I see what's happening in my neighborhood. I want to figure out how to rebuild communities in Memphis. Mm-hmm. And so I stumbled across com- community development on the city and regional planning program for the University of Memphis on the website. I didn't even know what it meant, but I figured community, develop, that's what I want to do. Oh. And right then, it, it, and that was all she wrote. So I've and been on this path like ever since. That. Just like that. Just like that. Wow. So is that where your love for, I guess, you know, um, the community started? Yeah, um, it is. It is. I mean, all of us in my household, we grew up with a spirit of service. Um, you know, it's it's kind of evident by you know, the jobs that me and my brother and my sister hold now, like we're all working in in public service. And so, you know, for me, it's just all about finding purpose in the work that we do. And I really believe in Memphis. I really think this city is great. And we've been hearing it for years. Mm -hmm. But then when I moved to New York, it was only for a short stint. When did you move to New York? This was 2005, 2006, 2006. I was there for about a year before I got the love bug and moved home to get engaged. Okay. But while I was there, what I realized is that Memphis got some of the coolest people mm-hmm. ever. Like, I was, the the people that I was hanging out with, they just weren't as cool mm-hmm. as folks from what Memphis. What were you doing in New York? I worked for this nonprofit uh, called Local Initial Support Corporation. We were helping uh, community development corporations across the nation um, with financial management, board governance, all these different things that nonprofits need. I was working on those aspects of their programs. And so socially, New York was just not the place for me. Uh, and, I, and I really felt this urge to be back in Memphis and figure out how to, how to contribute. And so you know, I moved back, got engaged to who was now my wife, uh, Jamila. Shout out to Jamila Smith. Shout out to Jamila. <laughs> got that love book, Jamila. <laughs> yeah, huh? got the Brought love book. Came, came on back. Uh, but, you know, since that time, I've been trying to figure out how to add value in Memphis. That's what I want my life to be about. Okay. So you've had numerous roles in housing and community development. Walk us through, um, I guess, your uh, repertoire in Memphis in those areas, because you've done quite a bit from my research. I'm like, wow, he's so young to be doing so much. (laughs) Oh, thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Well, I I started at the bottom. I mean, I was an intern in planning, and then, 
you know, I moved to New York, like I mentioned, then I came back and started working for Archie Willis, who's an amazing guy, mentor still to this day. Uh, and we worked on a lot of the, what they call Hope Six development that's rebuilding public housing. So things like Lamar Terrace, Dixie Homes, which are now University Place, Legends Park. I worked on projects like that. So I was a financial analyst, so I was working the numbers. Uh, I did uh, legislative work for the county. So I was the person that was going to Nashville and D.C. and telling the legislators what we need in our community. I became the director of housing for the city. Oh, sorry. Before that, I was the sustainability administrator, which we were working on green initiatives. Did director of housing for the city, which was an amazing job. I mean, it was it really was my dream job. Um, and then now I'm the director. Sorry, I'm not the director. I'm the president. <laughs> you better get it right. <laughs> yeah, you got to represent. <laughs> I'm the president of Downtown Memphis Commission, where we get an opportunity to work on amazing projects that really move the whole region forward. It's not just about Memphis. It's about the whole region. If if downtown doesn't thrive, the rest of our region doesn't thrive. But when we thrive, the rest of our region thrives. And so that's what we focus on. Right. Now, from what you just told me, like a lot of your background has been in the planning, housing mm-hmm. sector. And, you know, Memphis has always been so high up there for poverty. So right. how does that correlate with what you do? Yeah, I mean, there's a deep correlation. When I was the director of housing, not only did we work on building physical structures, but we also had a lot of social service programs. So things like homelessness and trying to help people that are um, you know, I got so many calls where there's a family where somebody's getting kicked out of their house because of some fight with their parent or whatever reason it is. And they got a kid and they're sleeping in the car or sleeping on the street. So there's the social services side. Um, there's the, um, you know, community development. When you start thinking about what do you need in a neighborhood to thrive? Uh, obviously, you need housing. And so that was one of the primary things we worked on. But we also had things like grocery stores that people need in their community. So uh, when you look at um, the when Kroger left the spots on third and on Lamar, yeah. when they left those two, those were two projects that I had an opportunity to work on. Historic Melrose in, in Orange Mound, where that building has been vacant for 40 years, had an opportunity to meet with the community over and over and figure out what they need, and now you're going to see a library with a genealogy center there. So it's a lot of stuff that I'm proud of that we had a, we played a part in. Obviously, we didn't solve all the problems, but we make progress towards the goal. That's, yes. what, that's, what, that's what I'm all about, make some progress. And it's all about progress because I feel like Memphis is, is undergoing like a renaissance right now. It is. It's so much development. It's so much stuff happening, and we just got to make sure that people don't get left out. It's great. Mm-hmm. And I always tell people it's not either or, it's both and. Like we need stuff in our neighborhoods, but we also need stuff downtown. Okay. We got to continue to elevate our economy mm-hmm. at a high level, mm-hmm. and we also got to figure out how to invest in our neighborhoods and the communities. And so, so we got to do talk both. About when you first got into this role, which was last year, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep, last year. So, what did you immediately see that was needed when you stepped into the role? You probably entered it during the pandemic and mm-hmm. all of that, so I know that probably weighed. Yeah, it definitely. In, but. Yeah, um, you know, there were a couple of things. When I first came in, there was, we had just came out of the COVID proper. proper. And so people were back out. We were back outside. Back outside. <laughs> and so we had some public safety issues. And most of those safety issues were folks driving downtown recklessly, just coming down, speeding. So that's when we had to put down the the uh, speed bumps and, and things of that nature to kind of tame that down. Now that's kind of calmed down uh, quite a bit. We also just needed people. Um, you know, a lot of the, if you think about our economy downtown, there's a lot of businesses that serve lunch mm-hmm. and they're small businesses and they don't make a lot of money. But in order to serve lunch, you got to have people down here. So when all of these offices are shut down, when AutoZone, FedEx, all these folks yeah, aren't in the office. from home. There's no economy for them. Thankfully, we had a lot of people working from home, and we have a lot of residences downtown. So that helped hold us down, but we needed more people. And, you know, we're back now, though. Everything is good. Okay, yeah, because when I ride downtown, honey, when I when I go down Riverside, I'm looking to my left like <laughs> Tom Lee Park. Y'all better come on with it. Oh, yeah, oh, Tom Lee Park. Get involved with that. Well, not directly, not directly. Okay. I'm highly supportive, though. I mean, it's going to be <laughs> yeah. an amazing asset for downtown. That's what okay. I try to tell people. We got to – we got to be appreciative of great things in our city. Um, 
we we have to have an a mindset of abundance. Like we deserve this. We deserve to have a world class park where we go on the Mississippi River where we have the largest vista of the like. And what I mean by vista is one mile of water when the water is up at its height up for the Mississippi River. You can see water for one mile. There's no other spot along the Mississippi where the river is that wide like it is right here. And we're celebrating it with a world-class park that visitors and Memphians will be able to come and enjoy. I was just down there not too long ago at the Tall Memphis Gala. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry I missed that too. It was nice. Yeah, I know, I know. But I hadn't been on the on the river in so long and you know, it makes you appreciate what we have here in Memphis. Yeah, sometimes we forget. We get spoiled cuz we're here every day and you yes. just don't go down there, but yes. you know, Memphians we 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 got to take advantage of it. Yes, yes. Now, in your role, Paul, you deal with a lot of investors. Mm -hmm. What is the main attraction of people coming in wanting to invest? Like, what are they so excited about? Yeah, that's a good question. That's a good. So Memphis is unique, and I always tell people this. No shade to Nashville because they booming. They killing it. We all know it. They yeah. you go up there, it's, you it's shining. Up there and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> they they killing it, but. It doesn't have as much flavor as yeah. Memphis, and I may be biased. Of course I'm biased, but people also feel it. When you come to Memphis, it's something that you can't bottle up. It's just a feeling. It's so much soul, so much culture. I always tell people diversity is our superpower. We got it naturally. We don't have to try to be diverse. It just happens in Memphis. And so investors appreciate it. They feel it. Um, they also feel the energy. Like when you see multiple projects happening that encourages developers to say, hey, something happened in here. I need to get in now while it's early. And so I think you're starting to see a lot of that happening. Um, you know, the pandemic slowed us down a little bit. I think we would have seen some of these larger projects get over the hump, but mm -hmm. but they're working hard, and I think all, all of those are going to make it to the finish line. Okay. Um, and, and when we talk about investors, do you all work with like a certain group of investors? Is it is it is it different people all the time? And what does diversity look like with the investors here in Memphis? Yeah, so so certainly there are some of the same same folks. I mean there are, there are people that have done work downtown for many many years. Right. But when we talk about diversity, what we're what we're saying is that we don't want to exclude anybody. We want to include others. Mm -hmm. um, and so we believe that. Our developers that are already working can make their teams more diverse, so we push them to get higher minority participation. Uh, we're a city that's 65% black, mm -hmm. and if we're ever going to really make it to where we want to go, you talked about poverty, we got to build wealth in the black community. And one way to do it is through real estate and getting that mailbox income. That okay. mailbox income, that's where... You just sit back and it just shows up. You got a check. Another check is coming. Uh, and we're seeing our developers respond. We have uh, Kevin Woods and Billy Ogle partnered together to do 100 North Main. Uh, Chance What's going on with 100 North Main? Tell me about so, that project. So 100, that's a building that's been vacant uh, for eight years, 37 stories, largest building in, in Memphis. And we did a competitive grant process, not grant process, competitive process to pick a developer, and that's the team that we ended up selecting, partly because of the diversity of the team and their willingness to, to pay for the property. Uh, and then you got projects like the Hyatt Grand, which is in the news right now, and uh, hopefully things will work out on that. But Hyatt Grand has a 14% minority ownership. Now think about that. That would be – this will be the only – tower in downtown memphis that is owned 10 percent on 14 percent ownership by african-americans in memphis uh, that's you amazing. know Especially that's that's moving the needle in a different way that's okay. moving the needle in a different way and that's something that we should be proud of as a city okay so paul talk to me talk to me nice tell me tell me <laughs> this what has been your biggest challenge in this role as the president and ceo of the downtown memphis commission crime I mean, just being real, crime is crime is the biggest issue, and it's it's not a it's not necessarily a downtown issue. It's a Memphis issue. Um, we have challenges with crime, and you know, I want all our people to be able to thrive. And mm -hmm. in order to fully address crime, what we know is that we got to get into the prevention mode. Um, you know, a lot of times because it's so urgent and pressing, and people are feeling it every day. Uh, my heart goes out to. 
uh, the pastor in Whitehaven um, mm-hmm. that lost her life. I, I know her, her daughter. That, that really hurts my heart. And, and those are pressing concerns that we got to address now. But in order to really stop this in the future, we got to get into prevention mode. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily a downtown thing. That's an all of us thing. We got to figure out what are the programs that really, really work, who are touching the people every day so that we can show the young people another course of action, another yeah. direction. And crime has been an issue in Memphis for quite some time. Yeah. Um, I think this DA race is going to really be important and vital. Yeah, yeah. We, we, whichever one wins, uh, and you know, I know both of them, friends with both of them. So, you know, I, I wish them both the best. But whichever one wins, you know, they got a tough job. And right. they, they got to figure out how to help us get over the hump. And and let's see how they connect in with the community. Now, I see Steve out there at the All White. I saw him at the All White. At I saw the All that. White affair. I saw him with the can. He went to KG and got his All White suit. He went to KG and got <laughs> suited yeah, and looted and was passing out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he was shaking hands. He was working. I was so shocked. Okay, okay, okay. So, Paul, let's talk about this. You know, we love Bill Street. Um, We love, I've been to Food Truck Thursday. I love that. What are some of the other activations that people may not know about going on downtown that you guys are trying to yeah. Really put some fire under. Yeah, both both of those that you said. Okay. Bill Street, we manage Bill Street on behalf of the city, so we always want to see people go down there and have a good time. We want to see more Memphians get down there too, and Instead not just a tour. tour. Yeah, just come on down okay. there. You're gonna appreciate it. Um, food truck Thursday, we do yoga in the park on Tuesdays. My sister does that. Uh, yeah, people that do it love it. Um, during the playoffs, and we'll we'll try and do this partnership again next year. But during the playoffs. Uh, we did watch parties in the one. park, and they that were they fun. were amazing. They were at one of at, during the second round. At one of them, we had about four thousand people mm-hmm. show up in the park, and so it, it was, was so it was so beautiful mm-hmm. just seeing Memphians out there just having a good time. Everybody bring their lawn chairs and just enjoy the so game and cheer too. on. So diverse. I love it. uh, it's Memphis to the core. Yeah. Um, and so all the things, that, and we also partner with a lot of. Uh, event promoters so folks that have different events they want to bring them downtown Um, we have event grants that we provide through our office so we don't try to host all the events we want to support the events so if you're there are people that have a vision for doing something downtown all right well hey we'll talk about an event grant (laughs) let's talk about it yes so how will downtown memphis look in the next year versus the next five years I say the next year, um, you're going to continue to see more bi- small businesses come online and occupy spaces. We, every day we're talking to folks. In the next five years, I think you're going to see some of our larger dormant spaces become activated. You'll see things like the Hyatt Grand. You'll see things like the Walk, uh, which is on Union. Those things will actually be either under construction or completed within five years. And I, I think downtown Memphis is going to be, I think Memphis quite frankly, is going to be the next great city in the South. Yes. Every every few years you have another city that's on the move. Nashville's been in, been that city. Austin, Charlotte, Atlanta. We up next. Yeah, we up next. Okay. We got next. Okay, y'all heard what Paul yeah, Young we got said. Nicks. Y'all heard what Paul Young said. Now, we about to have a little fun, Paul. All right, uh-oh, I'm scared. Because I heard you say <laughs> that you a 90s baby. You like that 90s music, I do. right? yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to see how much 90, 90s music you know, though. All right, let's so not go too... So we're going to do a little something yeah, right. called Finish These Lyrics. All right. Now, I'm going to give you the line, and you must complete it. Now, do you want me to kind of like... Sing in that tone. Yeah, so sing can... it for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That'll be more fun. Okay, let's see how does Paul know these 90s lyrics. Okay, I'm sticking in the 90s too. So here's number one. If at first you don't succeed. Try, try again. Almost, almost. <laughs> is it, what, what Set is yourself it? off and try, try yeah, again. You yeah, was close. Yourself off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You My was bad. close. All right. Aaliyah, all right, got okay. you. Aaliyah. Okay, you knew it yeah, was Aaliyah. Yeah, I knew it was Aaliyah. Okay. Okay, this is the next one. Okay, okay, this is the next one. It's been three weeks since you were looking for your friend. What? It's been three weeks since you've been looking for your friend. I don't know that one. I feel bad. I don't know that one. She's a singer and a rapper from the 90s. It's been three weeks since you've been looking Looking for for your your friend. friend. Uh, 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 uh. 
You're going to have to give me that one. What's the one? The one you let hit and never called you again. Lauren Hill, that thing. Oh, that, yeah, Paul, yeah, yeah. Not, Paul don't know his no, 90s. I, what y'all I, think? My bad. My bad. <laughs> Okay. I do love that Miseducation album. Yes, I just, um, that was all yeah, that. Okay, one more. And you better know this, Paul. Because right. this, uh, this legendary. All right. I'm just a bachelor. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's genuine. <laughs> what does he say, Paul? What's I can't make out the... I'm, I'm just, just a, a bachelor. bachelor. Looking for something. Partner. Partner. Yes. Yeah, that was good. Let's give <laughs> yeah. Paul yeah. Young a round of applause. I think you did great, Paul. All right. I, I, I feel might, like I did so part, but I, I think you got you was better than I want to redo. You want to redo? Yeah, I got to be back on the, the show. Time, so just just for this segment. The next time yeah. you gonna do a redo. You gonna do a redo. I want you to tell the verbally effective audience why you love Memphis so much, Paul Young. I love Memphis because there's nothing like it. The people are amazing. The city has so much flavor and we got so much room for growth. Like that. And, and I really believe this, that Memphis can be the black city to really get it right. Mm. Can we be the black city that figures out how to grow inclusively? We can be the city that does that. I really think we can do that. I think we have an opportunity where we can grow, where, you know, the people that are, are living in the neighborhoods that they hadn't seen growth and development, as those neighborhoods grow, they won't gentrify, but they will grow without displacement. So they can live in the – they live down there during the down years, so they can live there during the up years mm-hmm. uh, when things are happening in those neighborhoods. I really believe that, and that's part of why I love the city. It's yeah. just a great place. I agree. And, and people are passionate. Like, we just cool. Like, Memphis folks just – when you talk to us, it's just so much swag. White, black, Hispanic, wherever, whoever you talk to, everybody's just, it's just a lot of cool people in this city. And it's not normal. It's not, <laughs> it's not normal. normal. We're like, different. We're different. Yeah. We're different. Yeah, I agree. I, I really feel like it's a lot of opportunity, as you said here. And yeah. people want to be a part of that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, you are doing an amazing job in your role as the president and CEO of the Downtown Memphis Commission. I commend you, Paul. I want to thank you for coming on the Verbally Effective podcast and let everybody know how they can continue to follow your journey. Yeah, yeah. You can follow me on Facebook, uh, Paul Young. Follow me on Twitter, Memphis P. Young. I don't post that much, but I'll start posting more soon. Um, and you can follow Downtown Memphis at Downtown Memphis on all of the platforms. You can see all the stuff that we have going. All right. Well, thank you. And you did an amazing job, by the way. Thank you. Great job. Great job. I appreciate you for coming and, you know, giving us some insight on what's to come in Memphis.